welcome back to I Love. I am Podan. On today's episode, we've got ourselves a little operation of an Atari VCS Classic Controller, of course. I figure this is going to be a great opportunity. I have been playing hardcore on mine for about two and a half years now. It could use a cleaning, but also let's see how well it's held up to all that vigorous gameplay. We'll clean it all up, wash it all off, and clean up the contacts with, with alcohol. I do want to give a shout out to Mock Duck Plays Games. I did watch his video before attempting to rip my joystick apart because it does seem a little complicated. As you can tell from this diagram I happen to find on the Indiegogo page still. Very cool. This might help me figure out why he could not get his joystick out. And I think that it actually did reveal it. There happens to be this little pin here that could be why the joystick couldn't come off for him. Maybe I'll get all the way through it and get the whole thing apart. But if it does not come off, Oh well, we can take it apart and clean what we can clean. And of course, most importantly, see if anything has been broken after all of this gameplay. Let's get right into it. Here we go. We can see the Atari joystick in all its glory. First, we will have to remove the two rubber pads we see here. I am using an electronic plastic spatula separator tool. These tools I do suggest everybody picks up. They do very little or to no damage to plastic parts when you are separating them. I would have normally used metal and I definitely would have destroyed a lot of my joystick without them. So make sure to pick these up when you're doing separation of plastic. After getting the first pad off, if you are lucky, the sticky residue will stay on the rubber pad for the most part and you won't have to glue them down, which is good. So I suggest taking your time and even maybe warming up the pad so that way the sticky side will you know, come off and stay on the rubber. I'm peeling off the excess stickiness here. Eh, there wasn't too much, so I decided just to rub it off with my fingers. You could go a little further with alcohol, but I really felt no need. As you can see, there was just a little bit on there. Screwdrivers for the first screws. I am using a Phillips number one by 25. The screws here are a little bit bigger than the ones we find inside. There are four two under each rubber pad. These come out very easily. They are going into plastic, so when we reassemble, we'll get to that later, do not strip them. Get all four of the screws out, and then we can separate the bottom of the joystick. One thing is holding it on, that is the battery power cable. Make sure not to just rip it apart and fold it open slowly so you can disconnect the cable instead of wrecking it. I use a pair of tweezers here to get a good clamp on the plastic rather than pulling on the cable. Next, we're going to separate the battery. It is stuck by a two-sided sticky foam pad. It felt a little, a little tough to get off, but just take your time so you don't damage the battery separating the foam pad next so I can save it. Both sides were sticky and I did save it because I'm sure that this has maybe some uh, heat protection as well. Here we can uh, take a look at the battery. We can see it is an 1100 milliamp battery. Maybe in the future we can get a bigger battery inside the spot we have here. Dusting out a little bit of the excess dust that was inside. Interesting enough, you can see it here, but we will show it later. The controller is, is see-through, and you can't really tell that. Using my tweezers, I can take the two springs, which are holding in the action or B button of the controller, and then it pops right out. Super easy, and that is the entire bottom of the controller. Next, 
we will move to the top, which houses the rest of all of the components. First, we will disconnect the cables. The ribbon cable here, that is for the joystick. Make sure to lift the ribbon cable clamp with a tweezers to then freely pull the cable out. You can very easily tear these cables. Next, this is the rumble motor cable. This one was a little tight, so it was a little hard for me to get it out. I'm going to speed up the footage a tiny bit here, but basically I just needed to use the tweezers to kind of push on the little, uh, the little tongs on there, as you can see, that hold it in. And this did allow me then to pop it out a little bit easier. It was tight, but we got it. And there we go. Now with those free, we can take out the four screws that hold the, the, the PCB board in the bottom here. Now for these screws, they are slightly smaller. So this is a Phillips number zero by 25 I am using here. We can get the four screws out and then the bottom PCB will pop right off. That is the little B button thing there. And there we go. Now we can inspect the PCB. There's the bottom. And here is the top. This plastic piece here, it has two clamps. This is one of the parts that got a little tough for me, so we're going to speed it up here. Basically, you just need to get a nice firm clamp on your PCB so you don't put stress on it and squeeze the, the big part of it from the one side well with your thumb or other finger you're pushing on one side of the tab so that way it will pop out quite easily and finally there at the end I got a good grip on it to pop it off. Now this holds down the pad or the contacts for the joystick itself. Very very well put together and uh, I love all this extra parts because this holds it very secure while you're really roughly beating up that joystick. There's the contacts, the rubber ring that uh, keeps it nice and solid seal so the light doesn't bleed through and of course the LCD lights are visible there around. Now let's figure out how to get this joystick out. As I stated before, there's the pin, remember. Next, we can pop these buttons out. These are all just very easily set down in. They can each only go in one spot, the little rubber contact pads on the back side. There is the rumble motor. The action or A button or attack button pops right out. All of these are just popped in. They can only sit in one way and they have their own little pads. This was interesting. The Atari button here, you can see, it has a nice little rubber plug that makes it so that the light for it doesn't really uh, overshine and it bleeds it out so it's nice and uh, it's a nice glow in there. Nice little attentions like that. And you'll see another one here in a second as we remove the ring. So this is now again the other size screwdriver, the Phillips number one by 25 to remove these inner screws. These screws hold in this part of plastic that holds the uh, the uh, basically the fiber optic and we'll call it or optic parts that shine the lights from the board up to the top of the controller. And this is a very sturdy piece so that the light doesn't bleed through to the rest of the controller, which is very nice. And here I'm pulling out the plastic actual illumination piece that brings the light from the LEDs on the board up to the top of the controller. And that ring is basically designed to hide all of that light so it doesn't bleed through. Very good addition. Now here we're gonna look and get the piece out that broke. So this is one of the tabs that broke inside the controller. There are four of these we will see when I pop the bottom here off of the joystick. They hold the cup down inside there. I don't understand fully why. Next, we're gonna grab this uh, separator to pop the top of the joystick off to see the sensor inside here that actually is the, uh, I guess, the heart of the, uh, the spinner. So after prying that up nicely, we don't damage it. And there you can see like a magnet or sensor, which communicates with a little sensor uh, to a chip on top of that there. So that's what allows the whole thing to pop apart. 
Now we can see here, I'm pointing out the pin I mentioned. So with this paper clip, you can very easily push out the pin. There are holes you will find after you get that ring off that allow you to do this. The pin pops out very easily because it is held in place so it doesn't need to lock in too well by all of those cups and things that are around it. So with that off, this bottom piece can be freely taken off. And now this middle cup here and the joystick can be separated. At first I'm prying from it here, but the better part to do is to actually pry it from the joystick side, which I do in just a moment. Funny enough, I'm sitting here, I'm like, oh, can I just push those apart? No, you can't push, Podan. You need to separate, leverage. So that's where I realize now, yep, leverage the bottom of the joystick and pop, there we go. And there's the pinhole, there's the joystick with the sensor and oh yeah, there's the inner joystick that's all greased. Now we mentioned this later, but that grease is not spread out very smoothly. So it would be good for you to use a Q-tip and if you rip this apart, spread that, joy that joystick grease out smoothly. Now there are the pins. You can see there are four of them that hold that cup in there. Don't know why, because there is a tab that holds it straight too. And two of mine have broken out from two and a half years of gameplay, and the other two are fine. So that's what's broken in my joystick after all these years. Other than being dirty, that's the only thing that I have damaged in it. Pretty, pretty good. Great job, Atari and uh, Power A. Brushing out some of the, uh, the bigger chunks of dust before we wash later. You can see that the, the screen on mine is pretty filthy. A lot of dirty, dirty hands in gaming. So those are the cups that lock together. And those locking together are what attach to the pin and the joystick to hold the spinner joystick all together. Very well constructed. Great job. Now, let's clean ourselves a little bit of game sensors on the PCBs. So I get out some uh, very high powerful alcohol. You can get this stuff on Amazon just to uh, clean up the, the, con the contacts. It's always good to have these nice and clean after you clean everything. So there are the ones right there. And there are actually the one up in the top left, the two in the top right, and the two in the bottom there, which I don't clean in the video because I almost forgot. But yes, there are all of those too. Those are the LCDs, LEDs I'm pointing out. Now, I just get out a vat of water. This is something I do with all my controllers when I clean them. I let them soak in water. I don't even use soap usually because you don't really need soap. We're not going to put that in there because it makes contact with the grease. But all the other parts, the pads, the plastics, pop that right in the water and let it soak for a little while. I let mine soak for a, about an hour. Then with trusty toothbrush in hand, we can scrub all the parts, get all the hand grease and dust off. So that way, you know, once you put it together, it feels all nice and new again. Depending on the plastics, yeah, certain uh, brushes you might not want to use for certain controllers. I did, not, I did not find that the Atari controller had any soft plastics in it that my toothbrush or my cloths were scratching from cleaning. So you should be safe there with all of that. I clean up each button, scrub it all off real good, let it dry, use my towel to pull off the heavy water and blow out the stuff in the back sides so it can dry quicker. I do let my stuff dry for 24 hours before reassembling. And in addition to that, make sure you, you know, knock any of the excess water out of your parts. So that way, you know, you're not assembling something that has hidden water up inside of it. You wouldn't want that inside an electronic device. Electronics are extremely resilient. You know, uh, some devices in the right era, if they are fully submerged in water and they are never turned back on until they are fully dried, they will work again. An Atari 2600 is a great example of this. My original one was flooded in my basement when I was a kid. We let it dry out for like a year and I just said, hey, Wonder if it works. Wouldn't you know it? It sure did. Damn, Atari makes some good shit. But yeah, even the rubber contacts, because those are just uh, those little rubber pads, I scrub those. 
scrub off the lighting. Just gets all the dust and all the anything that could have been in there from sitting around, you know. I've been playing, and so have all of you, with some of your stuff for a little over two and a half years now. Every couple of years, I like to actually do this with the controllers I use a lot. Because you might find that you think that you need a new controller, but it's actually just the contacts could use a cleaning. So keep that in mind and save yourself a little money. I was thinking the same thing on this joystick, actually. I thought I might have broken it because it was starting to act a little funny. My diagonals weren't reading very well, and uh, I was starting to get uh, hung up. And uh, what I find is, is that the contacts being cleaned, of course, work. We will, we'll hear that later after I play with it again. And that, uh, you know, those uh, the little tab that was floating around in there, I have a suspicion that it was getting stuck underneath the joystick. Because every once in a while my joystick would get stuck. And now that the piece isn't floating around inside, though that is not happening and the joystick has no problems at all. There is a tab to the side that actually holds that piece in in addition to those four tabs underneath. So I don't know how much they are actually like a necessity. So if you're breaking yours, as long as you clean out the parts, you should be okay. So here we have the final part cleaned. You can see me dabbing off the excess water so it doesn't have you know, water everywhere. Got a little bit of spillage. Now we can spread it out and let it dry. I do usually set a, a like a small fan, you know, blowing on stuff like this on a low setting. So that way it's not just uh, drying by air. It has some sort of wind to make sure it dries fully. Another thing to keep in mind if you're gonna clean your stuff. There we go. All clean. And there's all the parts. Now this is interesting, I wanted to include this because I did not realize that the entire controller is actually transparent. But because of that plastic inner piece, you actually can never tell that this happens. Well, unless you hold it up to a light, or you know, you yank it apart, and there's the piece. You can plainly see that it fully blocks all of the light. Now, let's reassemble this beast. Here I'm pointing out the, uh, the, the pins that uh, I broke, and that they don't actually matter. But we need to uh, start from the place that we begin with our diagram. This helps out a lot. So the best way to do this is if you use the diagram, start from the bottom and go up to the stick. But if you're going to put back together, go from the stick and back down. Here we see that I completely spread out all of that grease we saw earlier. This does help the joystick spin way better. So first we're going to slide the joystick back inside the exterior joystick. Pop that back together. Boom. Now this is the step when you're taking it apart when you could take that uh, tube off, the top piece. You don't actually need to take that off. That's actually kind of a last part because all that actually does is allow you to separate the two parts. So I, I decide to put that back on before and to keep them two together, right? So keep in mind, now we uh, slip those two back together and of course we need the inner pad piece which has the parts that broke off on it. This, this slides over the joystick and is the part that the pin is actually holding together. And this is what allows the parts to spin freely and still act like a joystick. It's, it's pretty ingenious and I'm, I'm quite surprised at how sturdy it is and how well it works. So very good job. This is a fantastically designed joystick for the future. All of these parts, you can see I'm fumbling with it, but that's just because I'm realizing that it can only go on one way. So much like buttons and modern controllers and things, this joystick might look confusing, but the parts after you take it apart, they only can go back together one way. There's like a pin that'll block you from one way, or it's only going to slip fully together that one way. This part clips over the inner part that is held in with the pin with two little clips on the, t on the left and right there. And then that's just securely popped in. More or less just a part to hold it together and then to, uh, you know, keep the ribbon cable off to the side there, you see. Now, I put that in there and I'm trying to get the pin in, but you will soon see that having that part in is actually preventing me from seeing and guiding the pin into the hole on the other side. So I have a little bit of trouble here, but it's not that big of a deal. I realized like, oh, I should take this freaking cap piece off so I can actually see what the hell I'm doing here. Jesus. But yeah, you know, it's the first time I did it. Live and learn. And that's why I'm making the video so you guys don't have to break it. <laughs> I luckily didn't break anything from my disassembly reassembly. 
So that's good. I know uh, some people broke their ribbon cables and uh, couldn't get the joystick apart. And uh, that's why I wanted to definitely get this video to help everybody. The joysticks are quite easy to dismantle after you do it. So there I pop that plastic off because I realized it's in my way. Now just to be sure that the two parts are solid together, maybe use a rubber mallet, but I just use a little metal one to just make sure. I just lightly tap it. A wrap a tap tap. And then I get the pin in. And then I use the inner wall with the pliers to pull itself through. And of course, uh, I did not move the ribbon cable out of the way first. So I have to pull it back out to get the ribbon cable past it properly because you can see that the ribbon cable can sit really well along the side and that, that way the ribbon cable is having no stress or anything like that to it inside there while you're moving the joystick. There's a nice little pocket for it. Oh, and this is one of those great moments where actually you need three hands. Because it's just a, just a little bit of pressure you need to hold it back while you slip it through. And there, boof. Got it. Little tweezers and needle nose plier action. So there we go. This is, of course, the light bleed cover. Now this is funny because I'm sitting here and I'm looking at it and I'm like, hey... How's that ribbon cable go over here through that buttonhole? Well, dummy, it doesn't go through there. It goes through the middle of the light ring. What are you doing, Podan? <laughs> but yeah, suddenly I realized, oh, yeah, duh. But this is cool, too. That ingeniously locks under those little tabs there you see only one way. So if it's hard and you're trying to smash that in, slow down, lift it up, and slide it down in there. Because it, it really goes perfectly and simply once you have it right. Plastic screws again. These are the uh, the Phillips number 1 by 25s The last screws you would have taken out are these four. So remember which set you took out and the order you put them in. Because they're they are all different a little bit. If I remember correctly, these are the shortest, but they are the 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 bigger head. And there I put on the final cup piece. We can slip in the light ring. Make sure it's down in there all the way. Now we can slip in the rumble motor. I don't know if I mentioned it before, uh, but there is a spot on the other side like they were actually thinking about putting dual rumble motors in there. Maybe for costs, maybe they decided that uh, it wasn't needed, but maybe that's something, you know, we can mod and add because there's definitely a spot on the opposite side to add an extra rumble motor. Here I'm slipping the uh, the pad back in, the, the joystick contacts cool it's got these little like uh, rubber nipples that come through to make sure it's extremely tightly held to the board and in place and then of course the secure cap that holds the back side of the joystick down and you know holds the rubber sensor piece down too it's very nice I feel like all of that is there to just make sure that that joystick is always reading uh, able to press those contacts properly and very well No, that button doesn't go there, Podan. It goes in the bottom. There we go. <laughs> so yeah, this one, uh, you pop it in. Easily, you can just slip the, slip, uh, the button in. After I, I think, I, yeah, I put the springs on it, and I just kind of pop it down in there, so that way it's all together, and I can slip the springs over one at a time. You could do that either way. You could put the button in and then slip the springs over it. But that worked real easy. Next, we can put the pad in. I was thinking about not putting it in, but I decided no, 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 no. That should probably stay in there to keep it from rumbling around maybe or shaking around and also to, uh, you know, maybe it helps with heat because the battery gets a little warm. You can tell when you're charging it and stuff. Just trying to remember which way the cord goes there. It's funny, I have trouble trying to figure out which way it goes to because I'm, I'm not thinking of pulling it apart like I did. I'm just trying to sandwich it together, so that's really funny, but we get it. Make sure to put this. See, now this was loose in mine, so I'm just making sure to shove it all the way up in there so it doesn't pop back out and just basically uh, land flat. But uh, if it does, uh, you know, pop loose, maybe I can put a little piece of glue up inside of there. No, no big deal at all. Putting the pad on, the button slips in. Of course, only one way. There are tabs to make sure it only goes in one way. Same with the uh, action or A button. And then this is uh, the menu. 
and the start button. Basically, your start and select down here. I'm totally cheating and looking at the picture of the joystick to the right there, and I still almost put it in wrong, but luckily they have it so that the buttons can only go in one way. Idiot proof, right? I like that. So now you slip the ribbon cable through, you pop out the, uh, the the rumble motor cord, and you are free now to put in the next screws. There are four again, remember? And these are the Phillips head number zero by 25. A little, a little thinner head, you will notice. Plastic screws, I always suggest uh, be very careful. I always put a screw down, and then I reverse until you can feel it jump over the threads. That way I know I'm not cross-threading, because when you cross-thread plastic, you're pretty screwed. Ha! <laughs> Literally. But yeah, just be careful with plastic screws always. They're always a pain when you wreck them. Screw one, two, three, four. There we go. So now the PCB is all back. We are already over halfway done. It's amazing how fast it went back together. Put in the cord for the rumble motor. I try to make sure that the cable is the exact way it was so there's no extra stress on it. Pop up the ribbon cable lock. Slide ribbon cable back in. Now, because there's a lock, it only pops in like, sort of like, you know, you don't have to shove it in. You basically just push it to the back and it's still free and then you lock it down. So now that's all ready to go. Now we can sandwich it back together. Can you believe it? Already, we have the entire controller. Now, this is what I was talking about. I'm sitting here and I'm like, huh, how come the cable doesn't seem to be wrapping this way? Because it needs to wrap the other way because of holding it that way. It's kind of funny. I'm sitting there just laughing about it. I'm like, what is the deal? Do I have the battery backwards? No, the cable, it goes this way. I can tell it goes this way. Look at it. It's definitely going this way. <laughs> great super funny there we go there now I'm now I'm starting to hold it the right way so I can tell how it actually came out of there <laughs> Now that we got it plugged back in, you can see that it goes around that way. The cable does uh, go between two little plastic tabs right next to itself there to hold it securely off of the battery itself, but it sandwiches together extremely well. All the buttons are working, the joystick is moving, and we can put in our last four screws. These are the bigger size, the Phillips head number one by 25 again. Pop each one in. I don't know if anybody noticed, but I definitely always take screws out in like a diagonal pattern. So that way, uh, similar to when you take your lug nuts off your car, the pressure is even when taking it apart and putting it back together. Just something that you do with uh, machinery and electronics and things. Now we can put our pads back on. And there it is. All the buttons are working. The joystick feels real good. Now that it's done, let's go get some test play in, and we're gonna come back and see how it does. Oh yeah. All right, the verdict is in. I got a chance to check it out after my cleaning and all that good stuff. I have discovered that the controller works much, much better now that I cleaned it. So I think that this is indeed a very durable and strong controller. Great job, Atari and Power A, of course, the uh, designers and manufacturers of the actual controllers. Very, very cool. Some neat things that we discovered while we were ripping it apart and doing our cleaning, of course is the battery, in case you were curious, is an 1100 milliamp battery. Mine seems to be working just fine compared to when I originally got it. No problems of running out early or having trouble charging or anything like that to note. I did break a few tabs we saw inside. I'll bring up a picture here just to remind us of what that was. There were four little dotted pokey tabs that held the piece underneath here but since it was cupped up I really don't think that they had a real purpose since 
There's no negatives to my gameplay. It seems to be working just fine with the broken tabs. I was able to get the broken piece out, and the other one that broke, I have no idea what happened to that tab. Interesting, and who knows where it went. Another thing that I discovered while ripping it apart, the joystick, which we also saw. There is grease on the shaft. Ooh, grease on the shaft. But I did, as you saw when, right before I reassembled, I spread the grease evenly around the entire shaft. This makes the uh, joystick spin extremely smooth now and i noticed in yars that it sp spins very good now i remember before i cleaned it that sometimes the character would kind of jump around if i spun it real quickly that is now gone with that all cleaned up and fully greased all the way so i would suggest if you haven't done it rip your controllers apart because that is not going to be done on anybody's controller properly and it will make it work way better. Sadly though, you will have to fully dismantle the controller to get it to that point. But on that note, as we saw while I was taking it apart, I did discover, thanks to the diagram, I will give you guys a blow up of this, but in case you want to find the real file, this was included in some of the earlier updates of the Indiegogo campaign right around the time that they were starting to lock down the controller's designs. So you can get this picture and it did help me figure out how to take it apart and put it back together. And of course the pin, the pin is the key to getting the joystick out. After I got the pin out, which wasn't hard, I just used a paper clip as you saw, pushed it out, it was a little difficult to put it back in. You kind of need to make sure that it's lifted up to get to the hole across from it, but it's not too bad. So fantastic. But as I said, I would definitely suggest if you're gonna game the hell out of it, clean it up, and spread out that grease because it definitely pays off. Cleaning, of course, cleaning the entire controller was paid off. I feel like my vertical reading of my movement is way better too. I was testing in Yars again, of course, since it uses the entire joystick, I thought it'd be the perfect example. When I want it to go diagonally, it's definitely picking up that movement perfectly now. So fantastic. Super, super cool. I am very glad that I was able to get through the entire teardown of the controller. I hope that this will help anybody who hasn't done it yet or wants to. Maybe we can, uh, as we saw, make uh, mods to get bigger batteries if we would like, but who knows? Down in the comments below, I would love to know, how are your joysticks doing? Hmm? If you have any questions, as you saw, I, I had a pretty easy time getting mine apart and back together. Shoot me a comment and I'll let you know anything I can about getting yours taken apart, cleaned, and put back together. Oh yeah! And as always, like, subscribe, and I will see you all next time. Gotta get back to the battles of yards.